G'day mate, my name's Monkey and I'm an Australian currently living in America and I love Bluey so much, especially as an Australian and as a mum and also for teaching my husband a lot of Australian language and slang and situations. So because I love it so much, here are 10 insane crazy theories that I have made about the show Bluey. Bandit is an archaeologist in Brisbane and only makes $22 an hour. Shelly's a sniffer dog at the airport and on average also makes only $22 an hour. Neither of them are ever at work full time. So how did they afford this $1.4 million house in Paddington, Brisbane? Simple really, by trafficking rare artifacts that Bandit steals from his work and then he passes them on to Chili who has a line of transportation through the airport. They sell the artifacts in Bali. That's why they're there on holiday so often, to make connections. And hey presto, they have enough money to afford this house. How exactly does Bandit get artifacts to pay for his super expensive house? Bandit is a FIFO archaeologist for a big mining company in Australia. And he does dodgy under the table deals with them. Mining companies have to hire archaeologists to check their sites. If there's any artifacts or historical places, it's a no-go. So the mining company pays off the big bucks to Bandit to help get rid of these artifacts. Bandit then takes these artifacts back home, spruces them up, and then Chili smuggles them through the airport. Mining company's happy, and Bandit gets money for his house. How are all of the healers so rich? Maybe Chili and Bandit aren't international smugglers. And if not, then what's the answer? Bob and Nana have a $1.2 million apartment on the beach in Gold Coast. Bluey's family has a $1.4 million house in Paddington, Brisbane. And Strap's family has a $1.98 million house with a pool on the river in Brisbane. So how could the whole Gila family afford this? The answer, Nana and Bob obviously won the lotto and gave everyone a house. Except for Uncle Rad. He spent all of his inheritance on almond milk shampoo. Disclaimer, this is a really sad one. Our girl Chili had a miscarriage. Early concept art showed Chili with a large belly, but then we never saw that large belly again. To explain this, we look at the episode, The Show. Louie and Bingo put on a performance about their mum's life. Bingo has a balloon underneath her belly pretending that she's pregnant as Chili. And it's all fun and games until the balloon pops. The reaction from Bandit and Chili is heartbreaking. And a lot of people who've seen this episode and watched this happen, who've had kids or a miscarriage, said that this scene hit home. Could this signify that Chili had a miscarriage either recently or before Bluey? It could explain why Bandit and Chili go to such extremes to make both their children so happy and playing with them all the time. What do you Again. think? The games Bluey and Bingo play are all based on magic. But if you die in the game, you die in real life. But only Bingo knows this. The evidence is in the episode Copycat. Louis finds a near-dead bird and tries to save it. But unfortunately, the bird passes away. Louis then wants to recreate this as a game with Bingo. And Bingo is the bird. But when Louis tells her mum that the Bingo bird has to die, Bingo comes running out, ignoring that Louis and her mum said that she had to die. Because Bingo knows the rules and she knows that she had to stay alive as the baby bird, otherwise she would have died too. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you leave it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. Where is Bob? He has only ever appeared once in the episode The Grannies. And that's because Bob is dead and he only exists in Nana's mind. That's why he wasn't in any of the Christmas episodes. Otherwise, Bluey would have just FaceTimed him to talk to him like she did with Uncle Rad at Christmas. In the Granny's episode, only Nana interacts with him. Even Bandit says only to ask their Nana, not their grandparents. Bluey and Bingo have no interaction or reaction to him at all, even when he's dancing crazily on the phone. They only react once Nana starts dancing and talking to them. Even at the end, both girls only say thank you to Nana. So who knocked over the tablet and ended the phone call? Well, it wasn't Bob. Maybe it was Nana's budgie. Did Fido get his balls chopped off? And is Bandit going to do the same? The first episode of season three aired today called Perfect. The episode centers around Bluey and Bingo drawing the perfect Father's Day card. Bluey thinks of different scenarios to draw between her and her dad and decides to pick Boomerang. And this is when we hear Fido and Bandit having a very interesting conversation. I'm keen to get it done, but Chili, she wants to keep her options open. Oh, no, do we want any more of these 
these things really. I think it's pretty obvious that they're talking about neutering, but that Chili is not so on board with the idea. Maybe she'd like to have more little blueies and bingos. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Indy's mum is having an affair with the Pothogy man from the markets? But how do we know it's an affair? It starts with this episode, Early Baby, where Indy tells us that she's just had a little baby sister. In the episode Mums and Dads, she tells Rusty how mums go to work and dads stay at home and mow the lawn. So we can make the assumption then that Indy's dad stays at home looking after the little baby sister while her mum, who's possibly a baker, goes off to work, even at the markets. And it's here at the markets that Indy's mum meets Mr. Pothogies. But how do we know there's an affair? Because of the episode Hammer Barn, where we see Indy's mum and Mr. Pothogies quite cosy as they're walking in. So is it an affair? Is Indy's mum in a poly relationship? Or... Are they just friends? What do you think? Let me know down below. Are Coco's mum and dad pageant parents? I mean, otherwise, why is their whole family pink? Could it be that they're like flamingos and they turn pink because they eat a lot of prawns? Because every other dog in Bluey is their normal neutral colors, just like in real life. I mean, just look at all of this. Poodles aren't born pink. But show poodles are commonly dyed pink. Which leads me to believe that both of Coco's mum and dad were brought up as show poodles or pageant poodles. And that's why their colour is pink. And they've dyed their entire family pink as well because they're all show poodles. This would explain why Coco is so good at performing in the episode The Circus. That or someone threw a red sock in the family bathtub. So what do you think? Let me know down below. Why is Socks a dog? Yeah, I know the show's about dogs, but Socks is a dog dog who walks on four legs and bites and barks. In season one, we find out that Socks is one years old and we're made to believe that, yeah, all Bluey Universe little baby dogs are like Socks. But then in season two, we got Baby Race, where we literally see Baby Bluey and Baby Judo and Coco walking on two legs. So why is Sox acting more like a dog and not a humanoid type dog? Could it be because the transition from infant to toddler is like going from cute to feral? And Sox represents this toddler transition phase that many of us parents know too well. Or is Sox running her own race and each child just develops at different stages? And maybe Sox just wasn't ready to walk yet until the episode honk because all kids develop differently and that's okay. What do you think? Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more content like this with either Australian shows or with Bluey, please make sure to leave me a comment down below and I'll catch you in another video. Bye.